Today, we are breaking down one of the most important tools in modern software development, Kubernetes. Whether you are new to containers or already familiar with Docker, this video will explain what Kubernetes is, why we need it, and how it works. In the end, you will know exactly when to use Kubernetes and when it might be an overkill. So let's dive in. Before we get into Kubernetes, let's quickly cover Docker and containers. Now, I have covered all aspects of Docker in detail in my previous video. Simply put, a container is a lightweight self-contained package that holds everything your app needs to run, such as code, libraries, and dependencies, all in one place. Containers solve the works on my machine issue by making sure the app runs consistently across any environment. Docker is a tool that helps us create, manage, and run these containers. It's popular because it makes developing, testing, and deploying applications much simpler and faster. Now let's scale up. When you have multiple containers running across several machines, you need a way to manage them all. That's where a cluster comes in. A cluster is a group of interconnected computers or nodes that work together to run and manage these containers. But managing multiple containers in a cluster gets complicated quickly. This brings us to Kubernetes. As your applications grow, you don't want to manually manage hundreds of containers across various machines. Kubernetes is an open source platform that automates this process. It helps you manage, scale, and deploy containerized applications easily across a cluster of machines. Think of Kubernetes as a container orchestrator. It automatically handles tasks like container scaling, load balancing, and cell failing, so you don't have to. Here are some of the key features that makes Kubernetes so powerful. Kubernetes can automatically scale your app up or down based on traffic load. If a container crashes, Kubernetes will restart it or replace it automatically. Kubernetes distributes traffic evenly across containers, ensuring high availability. And you can easily update your applications with zero downtime, and if something goes wrong, you can always roll back to a previous version. These features make Kubernetes the go-to choice for managing complex distributed applications. Kubernetes manages your container across a group of machines or a cluster, and does this using several core components. At the heart of Kubernetes are pods. A pod is the smallest unit in Kubernetes, typically running one or more containers. Pods group containers that need to work together closely and share resources like storage and networking. To manage these pods, Kubernetes uses a central control plane that oversees everything. This control plane consists of a few key parts. An API server is the front end of Kubernetes that takes your commands and tells the cluster what to do. The scheduler determines which machine or node in the cluster should run a new pod based on resource availability. And control manager ensures that the desired state you define, like the number of running pods, is constantly maintained. HCD or ETCD is a distributed key value store that keeps track of the current state of the cluster. Now, the actual containers run on the nodes, which are the worker machines in the cluster. And each node has a kubelet, an agent responsible for communicating with the control plane and running containers. So when you deploy your app, Kubernetes schedules it onto the appropriate nodes, makes sure everything is up and running, and handles traffic between the different parts of your app using services. Services ensure that even if a pod moves or restarts, your apps stay connected. So when should you use Kubernetes? It's perfect when you have too many microservices or containers running across multiple services, and you need high availability, redundancy, and auto-scaling. Your application might also need to be resilient to failures and crashes, and you are working with cloud-native applications or have a distributed architecture. But Kubernetes isn't for everyone. So if you only have a few containers or a monolithic app, Kubernetes adds unnecessary complexity because managing Kubernetes requires a lot of operational expertise and resources. So if your team is small, the learning curve can be steep. Plus, running Kubernetes at scale can be expensive due to its resource usage, especially if you don't need all of its features. So while Kubernetes is a powerful solution, there are alternatives which might be better suited depending on your needs. For example, Docker Swarm is Docker's own orchestration tool, which is much easier to set up than Kubernetes. Swarm is ideal for smaller projects or when you want a simpler tool to manage your containers without diving deep into Kubernetes. And if you are already using AWS and want a simpler container orchestration solution, ECS is a great choice. ECS or Elastic Container Service is fully managed by AWS, meaning less operational overhead. It's perfect for teams who want to stick with AWS and don't want the complexity of Kubernetes. And if you don't want to manage any infrastructure at all, AWS Fogget allows you to run containers without worrying about servers. It's fully managed by AWS and is perfect when you need simplicity 
and have fewer scaling requirements. These alternatives provide a simpler, more efficient solution when your application or team doesn't require all the advanced features and flexibility that Kubernetes offers. To sum up, Kubernetes is a powerful tool for managing containers at scale. It automates scaling, load balancing, and recovery, making it ideal for large distributed systems. But if you're working on smaller apps or don't need complex orchestration, it might be an overkill. In the next video, we'll deep dive into Kubernetes internals, covering pods, services, and how it all works under the hood. So stay tuned.